Hi, my name is Kenneth Davis. I'm a mathematics consultant with the Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction. Since December, we've been excited to bring you my Wisconsin Standards of the Week. This is a weekly in-depth look at mathematics and English language arts uh, standards from the state of Wisconsin. This week, we'll look at several mathematics standards that are associated with patterns. We will examine how looking at simple patterns can lead to higher mathematical concepts, namely functions and algebraic thinking. Patterns are key factors in understanding mathematical concepts. It is essential for students to create, recognize, and extend patterns in order to make generalizations, discuss relationships between variables, and understand the order and logic behind some mathematical concepts. Looking for patterns in the relationship between two sets of numbers is key in developing students' understanding of functions. In grades kindergarten through second, students begin to look at the relationship between operations, namely addition and subtraction, and make connections on how numbers change when you add or when you subtract. As early as kindergarten, students begin by looking at different ways to represent numbers. In first and second grade, students discover the patterns related to the operations of addition and subtractions. Students also find different ways to represent addition and subtraction problems. Beginning in third grade, students will formally identify the patterns they see in addition and multiplication tables and use a variety of properties to describe these patterns. In fourth grade, students start thinking about a rule to apply to the pattern they identify. And in fifth grade, students form ordered pair, graph the numbers in the pattern, and generate a number pattern from a rule. Beginning in sixth grade, and extending throughout middle school, students make the transition from working with numerical expressions to look for patterns in algebraic expressions. This includes examining four major representations of patterns, namely verbal descriptions, tables of values, graphs, and equations. By the end of eighth grade, students should have a strong foundational understanding of proportions, lines, and linear equations. This would be the basis of more in-depth algebra study into high school. Let's look at a sample task that illustrates how this idea of looking at patterns can begin with simple arithmetic but lead to concepts of functions in algebra. Suppose you have this problem. You are asked to build a tower of 50 interlocking cubes. You are asked to paint every square on all four sides of the tower and the top of the tower. How many squares would you have to paint? As you can see in this problem, there are also extending ideas that can extend the student's thinking. You could ask the student, what if the tower is made up of 100 cubes? You can talk about and as what is the relationship between the height of the tower and the number of squares that they would have to paint. Let's take a closer look at this task. With a tower that is one cube high, we would have to paint five squares. That includes the four sides and the top. Remember, we are not counting the bottom. With a tower that is two cubes high, we would have to paint a total of nine squares eight around the sides and one on the top. With the tower of three cubes, we would have to paint 13 squares. At this point, students may develop different ways to solve the problem to determine how many squares they would have to paint if this tower were 50 cubes high. And that's all going to depend on the individual student's depth of understanding of the mathematics. Let's look further at this prog progression to see how students could solve this problem. One way you may have students do is they may actually try to build a tower of 50 cubes high and just simply start counting the number of squares that they would need. This may be a cumbersome task for students, especially given the fact that physically it would be kind of it would be difficult to paint or to build a tower that is 50 cubes high. So students may have to look at some alternative ways. Here's one alternative. Students may want to build a tower. So a teacher can introduce the idea of looking at tables of values to help organize the numbers and help students to see the pattern. Students could expand a tower like this to see what it would, how many squares they would have to paint if the towers were 50 cubes high. Students would, should be able to see at this point in time that as they add cubes, every time they add one cube, the number of squares that they have to paint increases by four. So they can increase this pattern and, and keep going all the way until they got the 50, adding four every time. Students can also continue to look at a pattern in a table of values, and they may see that if they look at increments of five cubes or multiples of five, they will notice that the tower or the, the squares required to paint on the tower jumps up by 20 each time. 
So every time they add five cubes, the total number of squares needed to be painted would be 20. So they can continue to do this all the way to 50. So they could skip count the cubes by five and at the same time skip count the painted squares by 20, thus being able to determine the answer to this question. Students are free to find a solution using a method that makes sense to them. As students progress into fifth grade and sixth grade, they begin to look at a graphical representation of this problem, and they are introduced to the Cartesian coordinate system. Students will begin to look at ordered pairs, and you can see here are our ordered pair that consists of cubes and painted squares, and they also notice that these points all line up. Students are starting to understand what a linear relationship looks like. They can see that their data is forming a straight line, and thus anytime they have a linear relationship, they will get a graph that looks like a straight line. From here, we progress into algebra and into functions. In sixth and eighth grade, students begin making a more formal progression into the introduction to algebra. They begin writing rules, they begin to look at equations, and they begin to look at the verbal descriptions and graphs of ordered pair. This enables students to better understand the concepts of function, domain, and range. For higher levels of mathematics, we can talk about nonlinear functions, and we can ask students certain questions that will help them to understand higher levels of mathematics. One question we might ask might be, how many, square, how many painted squares would there be if we had zero cubes or if we had negative cubes? And do zero cubes or negative cubes make any sense for this particular problem? And in which cases do they make sense? We could ask some questions about what if we painted all sides, including the bottom? Is the pattern still linear? And how will we, how will we change this problem in order to make it a nonlinear situation? Or we can give them a different type of blocks, like the one shown here, where we're building a pyramid instead of just stacking cubes one on top of the other one. So here are some ideas that can make this more progressive in the mathematics that we're teaching students so that this task can now be used at higher and higher levels of mathematics. I hope this gives you an idea of how arithmetic or numerical patterns can lead students to deeper levels of algebraic thinking.